In this video, we will try some multiple choice questions pertaining to function transformations. This is similar to what you might find on the AP exam. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.12. If you appreciate this content, please don't forget to hit that like button. Number one, during a month in a certain town, the temperature increases and decreases over the course of a day. A graph of the average temperatures during that month of any given day is shown below. The data in the graph can be modeled by the function t, where t of h gives the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit at time h hours after midnight. At a certain point that month, there is an adjustment to the clocks for daylight savings time, at which point clocks are adjusted one hour forward. For example, 6 a.m. instantly becomes 7 a.m. The function d models the same data as function t after the shift to daylight savings time. If h still represents the number of hours after midnight, which of the following defines d of h in terms of t? Notice that time is on the x-axis. If, for example, 6 a.m. is suddenly going to shift to 7 a.m., on the graph that's going to be a horizontal translation to the right one unit. Horizontal transformations appear on the inside of the function, so we're either talking about a or b. And on the inside of the function, the transformations look the opposite of what they are. So a horizontal translation to the right by one will actually be represented by h minus one. So the answer is going to be b. Number two, the function f is given by f of x equals x squared plus two. The function g is the result of a transformation of f and is given by g of x equals x squared over four plus two. Which of the following describes the transformation of f whose image is the graph of g? Let's check these answers one by one. So g of x is a transformation of function f. If option A is the answer, we need a vertical dilation by a factor of one-fourth. A vertical dilation shows up in the front of a function, and it looks just like it says. So uh, one-fourth f of x. So this would be a vertical dilation of f of x by a factor of one-fourth. This is just one-fourth times the expression for f of x, which is x squared plus two. If we distribute, we're going to get g of x is equal to, and I'm going to uh, try to make this match as closely as possible to what they gave us right here. So I'm going to write it as x squared over four, but then one fourth times two reduces down to one half. That does not match what we see here, so the answer is not a. Let's try option B, a horizontal dilation by a factor of one half. So horizontal dilations show up as multiplying factors on the inside of the function, but they are the opposite from the way they appear. So a horizontal dilation by a factor of one half is going to be two times x. Think reciprocal. For the next step, I want to do a quick side lesson. I'm grabbing the function f of x equals x squared plus two, and I'm going to use that for the side lesson. We all know what to do if we have f at seven, for example. That would be seven squared plus two. Uh, let me get more abstract right now. What if I had f at pi? That would be pi squared plus two. What if I had f at star? That would be star squared plus two. And one more, what if I had f at smiley face? That would be smiley face squared plus two. So going back to the actual problem, here we have f at two x. What's that going to be? Well, that's going to be two x squared plus two. Just follow the same pattern. 
So if option B is going to be correct, then g of x should equal the quantity 2x squared plus 2. But written without parentheses, this would be 4x squared plus 2. That's not x squared over 4, so b is not the answer. For option C, we want a horizontal dilation by a factor of 2. That's going to show up right here as a 1 half. These horizontal dilations are always the opposite of what they seem. But as we just saw in the side lesson, if I want to do f at smiley face, that's smiley face squared plus 2. So if I want to do f at 1 half x, that's going to be 1 half x squared plus 2. Rewriting this without parentheses, I need to square 1 half and square the x. 1 half squared is 1 fourth, and then I have my x squared, and I still have the plus 2 on the end. Well, 1 fourth x squared plus 2 is the same thing as x squared over 4 plus 2. So, the answer is C. Number 3, the function f has domain closed interval from negative 2 to 2 and range closed interval from 1 to 5. The function g is given by g of x equals negative 2 times f at x plus 3 plus 4. What are the domain and range of g? I like to solve these problems using charts. Domain is the x values of a function. So the original domain has endpoints negative 2 and positive 2. So I'm going to record that right here. And uh, the range is the y values. So um, the original function, the y values have endpoints 1 and 5. So 1 to 5 g of x is the transformed function, but we can separate this into the transformations that affect the x values versus transformations that affect the y values. The x value transformations will be on the inside of the function, and the only one I see is this plus 3, which is actually a translation, uh, a horizontal translation of negative 3. So I can find new x values, by doing x minus 3. So performing this transformation on the endpoints of the original domain uh, gives me, so negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So far we have g of x has domain negative 5 to negative 1. So we've narrowed it down to either a or b. Let's do the same thing with the range. The transformations that affect the y values are outside of the function. So that's the negative 2 and the plus 4. So I can find new y values for my transformed range by doing negative 2 times y plus 4. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, plus 4 is negative 6. So putting these in order from least to greatest, the transformed range is from negative 6 to 2. So the answer is A. Number 4, the table gives values of the functions f and g for selected values of x. The pattern of the values of f and g continue repeating every interval of width 6 for the closed interval from 0 to 48. The graph of the function g is the result of a sequence of dilations of the graph of the function f. Which of the following could describe those dilations? Let's investigate these choices one at a time starting with option a. So according to option a, g of x will be a vertical dilation of f by a factor of one half. Um, so I'm going to have a one half in the front of function f, because that's how a vertical dilation works. 
and also a horizontal dilation by a factor of one-third. That's going to show up on the inside of the function as a three. These are always the opposite of what they appear. So this is the expression that would give me a vertical dilation by a factor of one-half and a horizontal dilation by a factor of one-third. Now let's use this expression to find the value of g at one or two or three and see if we get the right answer. I'm skipping over zero because of all of the zeros. So for example, I think I'll just do um, g at two. So g at two should equal one half f at three times two, which is six. Now what is f at six? We're going to pull this off the table. F at six is zero. So if A is the answer, then G at two will be one half times zero, which is zero. Let's look and see if that's correct. G at two should be two, not zero. So A is not the answer. Let's try option B. There's a vertical dilation by a factor of one-third, so let's put a one-third out in the front. There is a horizontal dilation by a factor of one-half. That should show up as a two right here. So let's find g at two again. So this should be one-third times f at, and then two times two, which is four. So g at two, should equal one-third times, let's see, f at four is four. So g at two, if b is the answer, would be four-thirds. But no, g at two is two, not four-thirds, so b is not the answer. Let's try option c which has a vertical dilation by a factor of one-half, so let's put that one-half out in the front, and a horizontal dilation by a factor of one-half. So we have the two in, inside the function in front of the x. So let's try g at two again. So this would be one-half, and then f at uh, two times two, which is four. So g at two should equal one-half times f at four is four. So if c is the answer, then g at two should be uh, one half of four, which is two. And that is the answer. So the answer is probably c, but just to be safe, let's follow through and check option d, which says we will have a vertical dilation by a factor of two, and a horizontal dilation by a factor of three. So that would be a one-third right here. So then g at two would be two times f at uh, one-third times two. So that's three over two. Uh, that's not even gonna be on the chart anywhere. So the answer is not going to be d. Let's pick a value that we could use option D on uh, like three. Let's do G at three, because then that would be two times F at one-third times three. One-third times three is one. So this is something we can find. So this will be two times F at one. F at one is one. Um, so G at three should equal two. Okay, g at three is zero, not two. So d is not the answer. Number five, the function f is not explicitly given. In the xy plane, the graph of the function g is the result of a sequence of transformations to the graph of f. If the graph of g is the result of dilating the graph of f vertically by a factor of two, then horizontally by a factor of three, then translating the result up by seven units, then left by 11 units, 
which of the following defines G in terms of F? Let's take these one by one. The graph of G is the result of dilating vertically by a factor of two. That would put a two in the front like this. So that makes me believe that the answer is C immediately. But let's follow through with the other descriptions. Next, we have dilating the graph of F horizontally by a factor of 3. That will show up as a 1 third right here. That matches the dividing by 3 that we see in answer C. And then translating the result up by 7 units would appear as a plus 7 right here, which again we see in option C. Finally, translating left by 11 units would show up as a plus 11 right here. And one more time, that is what we see in option C. So the answer is definitely C. Number six, the function f is given by f of x equals x to the fourth power minus 3x squared plus 2. In the xy plane, the graph of the function g is a vertical translation of the graph of the function f downwards by three units. Which of the following defines g? To construct function g, we do one transformation of function f of x. That is a vertical translation down three units. So that will show up as a minus three on the end of here. So to finish building an expression for g of x, we simply substitute the expression for f of x, which was given. So we will have x to the fourth power minus 3x squared plus 2. All right, all of that is f of x, but then minus 3. So without parentheses, g of x will be x to the fourth power minus 3x squared. And then we get a minus 1 when we combine like terms. That's why the answer is A. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist. Or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.